people talking about past performance, that is not an indication of future return. How can people assess if real estate is a good investment? Well, you know, I, anybody who's, who's made money has always had their hands in real estate. And the next graphic that we're showing here is something that, that uh, I came across recently, which says that if you bought a home and held it for 10 years, did you make a good return or did, did you make money or did you lose money? And if you look at this graphic here, since 1942, I think is the first year that's, that's on here, your home in those 10 years appreciated in value in every year, except that one year, that one red number there. And that is in 2006 and why 2007, 2008, we had the huge financial collapse and, and real estate market collapse that we had. So that's the only time, but in 2007, after the correction, if you held your home for 10 years, mm -hmm. you made money. And if you take a look at some of these, if we can zoom in a little bit, the 10 year return is quite amazing. Most of them, if you take a look are 15, 20, some of these are hundred percent. In fact, in 1942, there was 153% return on your home. So in looking what this graph shows, if you bought a home for a hundred thousand dollars, 10 years later, it was worth 252,000 in 1942, for example. And we can get a little bit closer in and look at, at, at more recent times in 2011, 2012. There's a great example. If you bought your home in 2013 or 2012, and you held it for 10 years, which means you then sold it in 2012 or, or excuse me, 2022 or 2023, you would have had a return of $106,000 on that $100,000 return a purchase price. And even 2014, where we are right now, we're looking at an estimated 98. So it's, it's, it's not a hundred percent. You didn't double it, but you're still doing pretty good. You're, you're, you're doing great. So buying a piece of property and holding it has historically, at least since 1942, except for one year has showed great returns. Mm -hmm. And that's probably the, so yes, you can never say that past performance is an indicator of future returns, but I think in this case, when you have data from these many years and you only have one bad year, one unfortunate year in buying. And that's, does it mean that if, if you bought it in 2005 or 2007, you still made some money, but you didn't lose any money. And that's the key. Right. So, and you know what? And, and plus it's Hawaii. <laughs> I, mean, I, always, I always tell people that we have limited land here and you know, we, and we also are very sought after place. Not only do we not have enough homes for people here, but for all the people that want to move here as well and buy a property here, there just isn't enough. And home prices right. will continue on what we call that home appreciation escalator. Right. It'll just, and it's never just a straight line. It will go up and it will go down a little bit, but the trend over the last three or four decades has been pretty much straight up. Even right. taking into account the 2006, seven, eight time period, of of problems right and you know what and i think uh, for people that are diving deep into numbers and analyzing and crunching i think uh, now the conversation is mainly on the interest rates how high they are and people are you know just waiting for things to dive um you know do you have any input for folks that are in that line of thinking higher interest rates today are a barrier that i hear from clients every day Interest rates are high. When are interest rates going to come down? Maybe the best thing for me to do is to wait and wait for rates to come down. Yep. Now I prepared something that will visually show you why waiting is not only opportunity lost, but you're, you're not going to come out financially ahead. So let me give you the, the scenario of what we're going to look at today. And what we're going to be looking at here is buying a property today for $600,000, you're going to put 10% down $60,000. You're going to get a loan for $540,000. You can see in that first column there, and it's going to going down through this list here, 30 years, $60,000 down. The rate is at 6.99% with your closing costs. There's then where there's a no point loan, APR 7.165. It's a 
conventional loan, fixed rate loan, the uh, mortgage insurance, the $171 a month, the annual interest expense, and, and we're having the first year, you said $43,000. Your monthly mortgage payment to start with is the $3,589. With the, uh, you can see in here, principal interest taxes. I have an HOA, this is for a condo, by the way. And the mortgage insurance is $171 a month. Now, the question comes down to, yeah, so if we go through the rest here, what your total annual expenses are gonna be, the 49,560 what the prepaids and escrows are, I put in there $2,000. It's gonna be the same for every scenario. And the closing costs, another $3,500. Now, what if you were to wait? Because interest rates are gonna come down. Right. So the second column says, all right, well, let's wait six months. And instead of having a rate of 6.99%, right where your little cursor is, it shows a rate of 6.49%. And the third column, by the way, says let's wait a year and interest rates come down a full percent to 5.99%. Now, all of this sounds great, but there's something that most people are missing is that although you're going to see a lower interest rate, what about that property you want to buy? If it's $600,000 today, what is it going to be a year from now? And mm -hmm we're using historical appreciation averages here, but the way it got calculated here is if you were to wait six months, that $600,000 property is actually going to be now $621,000 and change because it's gone up in appreciate, it's appreciated value. So the sellers are going to look to get more money. If you waited a year, it uh, is $632,000. So we use the historical average depreciation here of 5.38%. Hmm. Now, what does that do for you? Well, with your mortgage, you're still going to put 10% down. So now instead of getting a $540,000 mortgage, you're going to get almost a $560,000 mortgage, 559, 455. Your down payment went from $60,000 to 62,000. And of course you go to year 63. Now, Let's, let's scroll down a little bit further. And I have a copy here I'm looking at as well, is that your monthly payments, your monthly payment has now gone up from, or has actually gone down slightly from $4,130 to 4,087 to 3,969. So yes, your payment has gone in the right place, but it really hasn't gone down that very much. In fact, if we, if we jump up one page, there we go. There's your cost of waiting is that your monthly payment only dropped $161, but with appreciation and your net cost of cost of waiting ended up costing you $31,842 by waiting a year. So yeah, you're going to save $161 a month, but that $161 a month over 12 months is nothing close to losing $31,000. And we figured all here, here's your change in appreciation, 37,774 minus your $1,932 in payments. And we even take into account a cost of refinancing a year from now, $4,000. Still gonna cost you $31,842 lost in, in lost appreciation, lost value, lost earnings, lost wealth. So. When someone says to me, should I wait and wait for interest rates to come down? My answer to them is a solid no, because in every, we can run the scenario any which way you want with interest rates going even slightly lower and appreciation being maybe not 5.3%, maybe it's only four and a half percent. You're still going to come out ahead every time by buying now versus buying later. Because keep in mind, once you buy, and interest rates come down, you can always refinance, but you can't go a year from now and say, can I have the price of that home? What it was 12 months ago. So take advantage. Wow. And you know what? You put things into perspective so, so much because I do have these conversations on a daily. I mean, and, and pre I'm pretty sure you do too, right? When people right. are conversing with us about acquiring property, you know, then they have conversation with lenders and 
you know, the conversation is very similar, right? I mean, we get the question, you get the question, they're trying to compare notes to make sure that, you know, they feel comfortable with proceeding with the decision, right? And I think right. having that number, right, having those numbers on play can help you with making a decision on whether, you know, ownership now is better than later. I mean, obviously, you can see it from the graph and from the explanation that Alan provided that that is the way to go. But if you do need a personalized uh, analysis because some people, they want to, you know, personalize the experience, uh, Alan will be more than happy to sure. run the numbers uh, your way. Contact. Any reviewers can either contact you. They can contact me through my website, which is hawaiimortgage.net. Mm -hmm. I'll be happy to do a customized one of these for you that you can see what your opportunity loss is going to be like. The, the cost of waiting is really what it is. It's an opportunity lost and what it's going to cost you in wealth, in, in earnings, in, in, in return on your investment. Because real estate, if you're going to live in it, you're going to rent it out, or it's a second home, it is an investment regardless of how it is, of how you're going to occupy that property. And so you, you need to, to think smart about this. Right. So I've been in the mortgage industry for 26 years now. And I've, I've bought and sold many a property myself and hold some investment property. So I'm always looking to see if it is a smart idea to buy or not. And mm -hmm. so I've never found a time where it hasn't been. And I've, I was born and raised here. I've bought homes when we had the bubble in the late eighties and held my home for 10 years. I was able to get out of it and make some profit off even during that bubble time, bought my current home in 2003. And has still been it since then and been happy since. And, and we are the, the situation here in Hawaii is even more exacerbated than any of those other times because we really do not have enough inventory here. The reason that home prices are continuing to to appreciate a, as fast as they are is a simple concept of supply and demand is that there are not enough supply, not enough homes for the amount of people that want to buy. Right. And I have clients right now that that I do pre-approval letters for and, and I do them a little differently than other other lenders is that I make my pre-approval letters specific to the offer going in. Mm -hmm. And my clients say, well, gee, but what if we modify our offer? I say, great. Well, I'll just do another one for you. But, you know, I have some clients that have, have looked at homes for almost a year. They've tried they, they've tried to get in and, and not be very competitive. And they've been outbid. In fact, I'm so happy that one of my clients who has been looking for a year finally got into contract and property, but they put in offers on nine different properties wow. and a bid on every one of them. So, you know, they, they did miss their opportunity by not going a little higher in purchase price at the time. And they're kind of kicking themselves now saying, yeah, I, I finally realized what you're saying because the house they bought, they got into contract last week is a little bit more expensive than the home they were looking at a year ago, even if they were to have kicked in uh, a little bit more money and the other houses was probably today worth a little bit more. So don't, don't be penny wise and pound foolish in that respect. Realize that we're in a market that is appreciating. And one last thing about interest rates. If you wait, it's only going to get worse. And I'll tell you why, because we still are going to have a shortage of homes. And when interest rates are coming down, you're going to see more people, especially the ones who didn't see this video. And they're going to say, now's the time to go out and buy a house. So now you're going to have more buyers seeking fewer homes than what there are today. And under the laws of supply and demand, that means home prices are going to go up even faster. So, you know, we see appreciation and home prices increasing over the next few years and not slowing down, especially here in Hawaii. And you know what, Alan, you brought a really good point. We are not a, a, a construction friendly state, right? Unfortunately, there's no, it's not in, in, in its entirety, but new, new builds are harder on the island due to our long lead time for, for permitting. So, Correct. you know, it's, we're, we don't have new builds, you know, the inventory that we have, it's what it is. Many of the homes that we consider new are over the 2000s. And, and so, you know, I think to your point, Alan, you know, if you continue to wait, you know, it's not going to get any better. Um, it won't be better for, for the buyer seeking to, to buy a home. And everyone has asked that question. They're going to say, you know, 
compared to three years ago, and you can't compare to three years ago, you only can say what there is today and what there's going to be tomorrow. So yes, interest rates were significantly lower three years ago, but you know, interest rates were above 8%, you know, 35 years ago. So if, if you were to take a look at what the average over the last 60 years, the average interest rate is kind of, we're kind of there right now. It, it sometimes is higher. We've had times certainly that it was lower. And, you know, in my 26 years, I mean, I got into the business when interest rates were, you know, in the eights and I've watched them over the years go from eight to seven to six to five to four to three, and then into the twos. And, you know, now we're back into the six, sevens. And by the way, just a few months ago in October, we were in the eights, mm -hmm. you know, and now we're, we're back down where there's a six in front of, of right. that number. And it's projected to go down as, as the graph here we're looking at, you know, rates are expected to come down. How fast? Don't know. But for those of you that have bought, as I said, you can always refinance and take advantage of lower rates later, but you're never going to be able to capture that appreciation unless you buy something now. Right. Well, Alan, you have provided way and more above and beyond. If I can speak of you, you're very thorough in your analysis when you're uh, conversing with with new clients, with with buyers, and and if anybody's interested in in learning more about you know Alan and his team and in how he operates, I'm going to be linking his information below this video. Well, Alan, you have truly brought in your analysis to the audience so that people are more informed. And as to how to tackle this market, right? And how to tackle those hard decisions because there's a lot of conversation on the media, you know, interest rates coming down, the market crashing, and, and we're here in our own little rock, right? You know, where, that, that, that happens to be a very special place where a lot of people want to live if we, were, if we were to simplify the conversation. You know, there's a lot of people that are longing to be in Hawaii. I personally, you know, I'm not an economist by any means, but... You know, I do see this island as a very special, just like many other people. And, uh, you know, there's no slowing down as far as the buying activity here. So, you know, if you do want to make Hawaii your home. And it will continue to be steady and we'll have a lot of people will always want to come to Hawaii. Right. Simple as that. Yes, they, they want the them. postcard life. You know, many of the conversations that, that Alan and I have, you know, we get to really you know, appreciate, right? I don't know if this happens to you, Alan, but for that, every conversation that I have with a buyer, there comes a sense of appreciation of where we live. You know, they're coming to us with all these stories of longing to be in Hawaii for 20 years, 30 years, right? They want to make Hawaii right. their home. They want to unload right. their properties back on the mainland and they want to come and be here. So, you know, for yep. those people that yep. are on the fence, you know, you guys now have the analysis that Alan provided. And if you do want a personalized, tailored reporting, Alan will be more than happy to provide. He's very responsive as well. And, yep. and yeah, I, uh, we wish you guys the best in this journey. And if you have any questions, definitely you, you know where to reach us at. I'll just add one last thing as well. I do put out a newsletter. It comes out every week. Yes. It's the uh, most read mortgage public or real estate publication in the state. I have thousands of, of subscribers. It's free. You can sign up at my website as well. It comes into your inbox every week. People love the content in it because it talks about not only mortgages, but what's happening in the real estate world here in Hawaii. And I give a pretty detailed analysis of, of the current financial situation as far as when we get things like employment reports or the CPI that just came out this week. And so it's a, it's a good read, a quick read, and I'd be happy to send it to you as well. Uh, Alan, I think you're very humble on how you're presenting this newsletter to the audience. It's, it, it's like you're reading a, an economist journal. That's the format and that is the level of, of expertise that Alan will bring to the table if you were to you know, converse with this lovely gentleman. But you know, he's been putting these newsletters way before ChatGPT, right? <laughs> so, so. I am uh, in my 16th oh. year of this newsletter. Um, <laughs> I mean, and you're, and you're consistent, you know, with these newsletters and it's very, very informative, very simple. I, if, like we're just talking here right now. In fact, that's know, one of the things I love about it is that it's, it's, it's presented in a very simple, conversive, uh, style. And that was, makes it easy to read. And that is correct, but very savvy also. And, and you will see if you were to join his newsletter and also 
a very recent, perhaps we can touch about this later, but condos in condos insurances. And oh. in fact, one of your email newsletter triggered an inquiry, right? That I had, that I was going through with a, with a client. Right. And so, you know, if, if you are wanting to get informed about Hawaii real estate and interest rates in macroeconomics and microeconomics, definitely sign up for his newsletters because they're impressive and I love reading them. Alan, thank you so much for putting those out. Thank you. And we will, we'll have more conversations as well. Awesome. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, wishing you a beautiful day, Alan. Thank you so, so much for being part of this interview. <laughs> great. Thank you. Have a great day. <laughs> Bye.